We're heading to the far western shores of Norway to visit the charming little seaside town of Bergen. And to get there, we're going to take you on one of the most spectacular train rides in all of Europe. We're starting out in Oslo, the modern capital of Norway, and we're heading across the country through some really fascinating mountain terrain, passing lakes and rivers and waterfalls, and finally we'll be arriving later in the day at the ancient capital of Norway, the town of Bergen. It's always a pleasure to travel by train. You have this wonderful scenery out the windows and you don't have to worry about driving or getting stuck in traffic or being crowded onto a cramped tour bus. You can walk around inside the train. And if you're a child, these Scandinavia trains are especially friendly because they have a playground on board. In all our travels on the trains of Europe, we never saw a train that was so friendly to the kids. And they just loved it. They were just climbing all over the place. So on the trains, you can really relax. You can kick back and read a book or take a nap or go to the snack car maybe and have some coffee or a complete meal. It's like a coffee shop on wheels and you're welcome to sit there and nurse a soda for the whole afternoon if you wish to. It's a lovely setting for conversation and perhaps meeting some local Scandinavians. You'll find that most of them speak some English and when you're on the train, well, everybody's got plenty of time. Nobody's in a rush at this point. So it's a real interesting place to meet some people. Meanwhile, the scenery is getting more spectacular as we gain altitude and climb up into the Alpine regions of Norway. It's beginning to look a little bit like Switzerland with these Alpine lakes and tall mountains in the distance. And soon we'll be seeing some glaciers up on the mountaintops, snow in the summertime. The lakes here are fed by glaciers and the water is a clear blue color and it's pristine quality. The visual feast is like a natural painting with trees and bushes along the edge of the waterway and even the lowly grasses and shrubs add wonderful, colorful elements to the picture we're enjoying out through our windows. The route we're taking is bringing us from Oslo on the east end of Norway right across the country to Bergen and to get there we're going over the mountaintops and when we arrive in Bergen we'll spend a few days enjoying the charms of this seaside city. We'll tell you all about Bergen when we get there, but for now let's enjoy the rest of our train ride accompanied by some of the music and folk dance traditional to Norway. Norway is fairly sparsely populated. Most of the people live in several of the larger cities and larger towns. The land area of the country is about equal to that of Great Britain, and yet the population is about one-tenth the size. There's just over 4 million people living in Norway, and nearly 70% of the country is mountains and lakes and glaciers. And here we're seeing it at its best. Traveling by train in Scandinavia is safe, reliable, and comfortable. And probably the most scenic part of Scandinavia is where we're traveling now in the west of Norway. At the little village of Myrdal, we change trains and get on the local Flam Railway. This is about a four mile train that is going to take us down from the mountaintops through several lush valleys down to the water's edge at the village of Flam and there we're going to catch a boat that'll take us the rest of the way to Bergen traveling through the Songa Fjord. The Flam Railway is quite famous as one of the more scenic little spurs and they stop now and then and let you off the train to enjoy the view, here we have a roaring, gushing waterfall. It's a terrific photo opportunity, but you've got to keep wiping the water off of your lens. The spray here is like being on the Maid of the Mist at Niagara Falls. But everybody's having fun. This is one of the few train rides anywhere where they stop the train just to let everybody off and take their pictures. So we've got about 10 minutes to take in the sights, enjoy the view, and then get back on the train. The train is taking us from the town of Myrdal down to the village of Flam. 
down at the water's edge in the Song of Fjord, and from there we'll catch the boat. Now there's a variety of ways to do this trip. You could simply take a round trip train from Myrdal down to Flam, enjoying the scenery, and then relax in the village and have lunch and turn around and come back up to Myrdal again and resume your train journey onto Bergen. Or there's a special trip called Norway in a nutshell. And with that, you take the boat ride from Flam just through a short fjord around to Gunbangen, and then you take a bus up to Voss, and then from there, take the train back on to Bergen. No matter which way you do it, you're going to enjoy these spectacular sights. This part of Norway looks very much like Switzerland. So while we're enjoying these natural beauties out the window, let's consider some of the interesting history of the country. In the beginning, there was the ice. For tens of thousands of years, it covered Norway and the rest of northern Europe like the icing on a cake. The ice cut like a knife, carving out many of these valleys and fjords and shaping the mountains. And then as the ice retreated and melted, the erosion finished the job and sculpted these beautiful landscapes that you see around you in Norway. The experts believe Norway has been populated for about 14,000 years, but they say it's only been governed for 1,000 years. And what is so wonderful about the country today for all of its modern ways is that it has still not been civilized yet fully into the modern world. Most of it looks like it must have looked many millenniums ago. These sites are as beautiful as any other great nature spot on the planet. The earliest residents of Norway seem to have come from Central and Western Europe by way of Denmark and Sweden and Russia. The earliest written inscriptions are from the 3rd century AD and they're done in an archaic German language that was the root of the Scandinavian dialects today. At some point in the 8th century the Norsemen began the small pirate raids on the Europeans to the south which gradually became large-scale plundering assaults on monasteries and towns and finally elaborately organized expeditions of conquerors who became colonizers. You've heard about these people. They're called the Vikings. We'll tell you a little more about these conquerors in a few minutes on our boat ride, but for now we're arriving in the little village of Flam, nestled on the edge of the Song Fjord. This is where we get off the train and have lunch while we wait for the boat. It's a very pleasant little village. This has been called Heaven on Earth. They have a couple of different places where you can have lunch. There's a restaurant, there's a cafeteria, there's a little snack shop, and of course there's a gift shop, there's an information counter, and there's a ticket office where you can buy train tickets or boat tickets. There's several little tiny hotels in this neighborhood and there's some wonderful hiking that you could do here. So if you're really the outdoors type, you might want to spend a few days in Flam. For us, we're just having lunch and connecting onto our boat, the boat that's going to take us down the longest fjord in Norway, the Songa Fjord, all the way to Bergen. It's about a five hour boat ride and there's lots of great scenery along the way. So as we travel, let's talk a little bit more about the history of Norway and back to these Vikings. They came from Norway and Denmark about a thousand years ago and commanded great portions of France and England and Ireland. They even got down into the Mediterranean and conquered parts of Italy. They were proud and adventurous and had a yearning for glory and a desire to excel in battle and a scorn for death. These Viking quality of heroism combined with their mercantile skills made them a powerful and dangerous race. Another theory about the major cause of the Viking raids was the expansion of European trade and commerce and the development of the new trading routes, which made piracy attractive. It was rewarding and almost inevitable for a people who lacked the luxuries of the wealthier and more fortunate lands of Southern Europe. Forced by the poverty of their northern homeland, the Vikings ventured far into the world to bring back from their raids the goods which other countries so plentifully produced. The word Viking has a Norse origin that means men from the fjords, and this was a name well suited to these pirates who hid inside the natural inlets 
waiting to surprise their victims. At first, the name must have been used for the raiders only, but later it became synonymous with the whole Scandinavian people whose modern descendants are proud of their Viking origins. One of the main reasons for the success of the Viking expansion were the excellent ships that they built. They also had very strong weapons. Their favorite weapon was the axe, and they also used the flat double-edged iron sword. They used spears and bows and arrows. Well, this Viking domination couldn't last forever, and by about the year 1200, the Norwegians were becoming Christianized. Medieval Europe became much stronger and Norway was no longer a dominant power. Norway's independence ended in the 13th century when the country became very dependent upon grain imports from the rest of Europe delivered by the Hanseatic merchants that we'll hear a lot more about when we arrive in Bergen itself which was one of their mercantile capitals. By the year 1400, Norway passed under the control of Denmark and remained under Danish control for nearly 400 years, right up until the year 1814. In that year, Denmark was defeated by Sweden, so turned the country over to Swedish control, but the Norwegians didn't care for that either, and they began their long climb towards independence. However, complete freedom from this Swedish dominance was not achieved until the year 1905. During the 20th century, Norway has developed into a very modern nation with a strong economy based on fishing and agriculture, based on tourism and manufacturing, based on high technology. They have an economy that's a broad mix of socialism and capitalism and provides opportunities for free economic growth and entrepreneurship as well as providing strong levels of social services for the people. Their government is a parliamentary democracy in which the real power is in the hands of the voters who elect the parliament who selects the prime minister. In addition to this central administration, there is a very extensive system of local governments with local councils that are responsible for housing and leisure activities and schooling and other cultural programs. We're approaching the town of Bergen now, which is surrounded by a vast archipelago of islands and channels linked together by bridges. You can see how important the Boating is here for recreation as well as commerce. And then all of a sudden we get our first breathtaking glimpse of the town of Bergen. Located at the head of a long natural inlet and enhanced by the harbor construction, Bergen is nestled at the foot of seven mountains. A view here of Rosencrantz Tower it was built in the 1560s by Bergen's governor as a residence and a defense post and we'll take you inside their grand meeting hall later in our visit to Bergen. Zooming in now on the eastern side of the harbor, this is where our hotel is located and many of the important historic sites of town, in particular the collection of wooden buildings known as the Brigand and we'll be taking you in there on a walking tour with a local guide based from the Brigand Museum. Here's a nice view of the complex of wooden buildings called the Brigand that's about 300 years old. Our group is staying at the Hotel Rosencrantz, conveniently located right next door. So as soon as we arrive in Bergen, it's getting late, but we want to go out for a stroll and we run into, of all things, a Mexican band in a Creole restaurant. <laughs> part of the wonderful mix of cultures that we'll find today in modern Bergen. During the summer there's a very long sunset stretching into twilight so it's a great time for being out and about and having a look at the people and the sights. You might even spot a modern day Viking. The Viking blood still runs through the veins of these people of Norway. Our Hotel Rosencrantz is inviting after a long day. Great to get some good sleep